have the Oppenheimer button. So let's get a good one. Oh shit. Okay. Yep. Wish me luck. Yeah, no, that's fine. It's great. And again, this is the low damage setup. Think about that. This video is made for people who have already played this build before, but because I know most people haven't, it's also a build guide. This build isn't a league starter, but it's a very good candidate for a second build. The reason I wanted to make this video wasn't actually for a build guide, but to spread the word that this build has been updated, because I've tried a few different options when it comes to gear choices, and I think I've settled on the comfiest version I can possibly make in terms of having everything automated for me and having pretty good defense with really satisfying offense as well. Another important thing I want to talk about is there is actually a new idea for the build that I haven't seen many people talk about. So if you've played this build before, you'll know what I mean when I say this, and you'll probably understand how it works, but the new tech is putting Infernal Legion on Skitterbots. So they essentially have a small version of Righteous Fire, Combined with Corpse Walker, Boots, Ravebind Gloves, and Skitterbots doing damage, that means the Flask is all you need to do in order to summon the spiders now. So, basically all of the combinations of skills working together have been automated down to just walking and pressing the Flask. I'll leave credit to the video I found talking about this in the description. I don't remember their name right now. I think it was Casual Dan. If that's true, I'll give myself subtitles, but we'll see. This used to be really clunky, and the way that you used to summon the spiders would be using something like Divine Aya, that would cast while channel Desecrate, which would spawn corpses, and the Divine Aya would usually be the thing to kill the worms. But that whole setup revolves around standing still to summon them again, and that sucks. That's gotten me killed so many times. So when I found out that I could summon on the go with this setup, as well as Castwell Channel Flesh Offering, I never have to stop. Makes it a lot safer, actually. And it's already fairly tanky and safe. So, very good feeling there. For people that haven't played this build before, let me explain how it actually works, because it's one of the clunkiest builds I know of in the game. So, as you can see on the weapon here, it says 100% chance to trigger level 1 raise spiders on kill. So, kind of like how summon phantasm works on soul rest, this summons a minion when a corpse is consumed, but that only happens when you get a kill. Hang on, let me rephrase that. That, that was awful grammar. When you get a kill, and it has to be you that gets the kill, this will trigger a corpse to summon a spider. I don't know if it's one per corpse. I think it might be more. I can't confirm that. There are three interactions that need to happen. You need to kill an enemy, the player needs to get the kill credit, and there needs to be a corpse ready to transform into a spider. So the way that we automate all three of those is the gloves make nearby kills count as the player no matter what, the boots spawn corpses as we're walking, even in hideout. And then the thing that gets killed in a boss fight or in the beginning of the map or even during the map to refresh them is the writhing jar worm flask, which spits out two very vulnerable little worms that die almost instantly. I think, no, it, worms are destroyed when hit, but with damage over time, they don't die instantly, instantly, depending on the map. So the gloves and the boots are kind of luxury items just to make this more automated. So... Technically, these are optional. Even the shield is kind of optional, because there's the squire, there's this, or there's a good rare. So there's still a lot of flexibility here. Even, I think you could change the brass dome. I haven't tried Undying Vow. Is that what 
think that's what it's called. Never tried that. Uh, intend to. I just like sticking with the brass dome. It's simple. Oh, and the amulet can be changed as well. I've used Impresence before this, and it works just as well. I might actually recommend that more. Using Ol's Uprising lets you fit in more auras, but Impresence, I think, is stronger for a longer time and a better budget option. By using Infernal Legion on Skitterbots gives them a, basically a really weak version of Righteous Fire which is enough to kill certain white mobs in maps. So even if you don't have Worm Flask up and ready, you might actually get away with it by just walking near a pack of white mobs and they'll melt and then spiders will trigger. It might not summon all 20 at once. You only got 18 here. So don't spam the Worm Flask because what it doesn't tell you is that there's a small internal cooldown on summoning the spiders. So you have to wait again. Don't actually remember. I think there's an icon, like it, there'll be like a timer over the icon, so you can check that. Hang on, can I do that? Yes, okay, see that? What's that, like one and a half seconds? So keep that in mind. Don't spam the worm flask. So, let me quickly go over the gear, and then the tree, and then I'll end with more gameplay. Okay, so, the gem links are actually pretty important, because when you don't have a squire, you only get three gems to play with. So the best option I've seen is multi-strike, unbound ailments, and withering touch as the green gem. So you need a red, blue, green. What I've gone with instead was melee splash, multi-strike, and unbound ailments. I fucking love using melee splash and multi-strike together. I feel like it covers the screen much faster. It is worse for single target. But when doing maps, I want more clear than I do single target. And even in this setup, it has a really goddamn good single target. Like, better than the bad version of Explosive Arrow that I was playing. It's still got amazing clear thanks to Occultist. And great single target just because of how good the build is. Although with that being said, the build doesn't shine until a certain level of investment. So... Until you get the right amulet, a brass dome with at least 4% max, and you can play without an Aegis, but it makes it a lot tankier because it's kind of glass cannon-y. Again, it's not a league starter of a build, but you can transition into this very easily. I actually intend to next league. I'm going to play skeleton mages all the way to T16s and then just eventually piece this together before I transition into it. The most expensive part is actually the jewels, because you need Amanamu's Gaze, and you need, like, at least five good Ghastly Jewels. I've made sure to do that, they're good enough, but I also realized I needed a Corrupted Blood Jewel, and getting that on a good Ghastly Jewel is insanely expensive. So I just went with this. Still got minion damage, and still got a tiny bit of mana reservation efficiency. So I think this is a great jewel. It's only got one dead stat. Good enough. Clusters aren't insanely important, but I did make sure to buy the best version I could afford. So the things to look out for here, if I can mouse over it without hiding it, there we go. The most important things on the cluster jewels is 3% attack and cast speed with 35% increased effect. This bumps the attack and cast speed up to 4. So if you get a 12 passive with those two mods, it's stupid expensive. So I go for 11 passives with the attack speed and the effect mod. The other two stats do not matter, but if you get something useful, good job. I got armor on this, I got res on this. Good enough. So that was the jewels. Helmet is Ancient Skull. This is pretty standard. Uh, you can go over all of this in the Path of Building link. I'll put it in the description. I'm not going to go too in-depth over everything. I'm just going to quickly talk about the good important points. Um, okay, so important gear. Let's see. Ancient Skull, best in slot. Uh, the downside doesn't affect the spiders because they're immortal. Uh, the Brass Dome, 5 all res is insanely good, and the increased armor is really good. This is not something I suggest people go for or do, but I just happen to end up with a really good setup here. 6 White Socket, 6 Link Brass Dome, so I can fit my Enlighten over all of my auras. So the auras aren't something to aspire to, like I can't even fit Vitality, 
I'm using two curses, you can get away with just using one curse. If you're using in presence, I recommend just using one curse because you don't really need both. Or you can self-cast temp chains, I guess, if you really want to do it manually. Uh, the two big choices for amulet, which I already touched on, is in presence or all's uprising. Uh, get in presence with despair. Reservation is free. You can get despair or temp chains. It doesn't actually matter, but I think the despair one is cheaper. I think. Um, an important corrupt that everyone should be thinking of getting on rings is bleeding cannot be inflicted on you. It might sound trivial because you can get it on a flask, but this just helps because it frees up that flask option now. It's a great little thing to get. And if you get corrupted blood immune on a jewel, you get that on a ring, and you could get poison or uh, bleed immune on the tree. So you can fix a lot of things with like corrupts and fun shit. Um, this is just a good ring. There's nothing special. The minus seven to non-channeling skills doesn't actually matter, but it helps when I'm spamming flesh offering like this, which yeah, you don't need. You just need one, but then I want to make sure I have mana for like shield charge and stuff. As I said earlier, the gloves and the boots are the most luxury thing about this build. I am barely pushing, god, I'm barely pushing 4.5k effective life, but with all the armor I have, with all the energy shield recovery I have from block, from um, divine shield, it's actually quite tanky. Like, I can get to 28 simulacrum waves with this setup, with an Aegis. It's kind of insane. It's really fun, but fuck, goodbye XP. I got to 28, and I just said, okay, I'm not doing this again. Uh, the Belt, Darkness, and Throne, best in slot, get at least 90% increase effect. Put your best jewels that you can think of in here. These actually aren't good, but I'm going to keep using them. The problem with this build is I never know when to settle on which jewels to use, so... The three best mods you can look for are Minions Deal Increased Damage if you've used the Minion Skill recently, Minion Attack Speed, and I don't know if there's a difference between Added Physical or Added Chaos Damage, but just in case there is, go for Added Physical, assuming that the Spider Skills convert Physical to Chaos, which they probably do because the Spiders use the old version of Viper Strike. I also don't really use Path of Building. I make POB links for people, because I know the question will be asked. But I don't actually read Path of Building. I don't care about the math. So, that's the gear I explained. Yep. Okay, well, let me talk about the tree really quick. You can play this as a Necro. I like Occultist for the explosions. It also lets you do Hexproof enemies. You get the explosions to clear packs way nicer. And you get nearby Wither. And a lot of Chaos Res. So... I think Occultist actually feels a bit tankier in a lot of situations. Pretty sure Necro would be better for bosses because of the increased attack speed bonuses and all that. And maybe Unholy might help, but I'm not sure. This is basically a Necro tree if you're like going for clusters, which if you're doing skeleton mages, you would be going for cast speed clusters. So the same tree kind of applies actually. It's just on skeleton mages, I would personally be using a staff and taking staff block chance and uh, life recovered on block. So it would be a little bit different, but basically the same. Yep, if you want to go over this in detail or copy it, the path of building will be in my description for this video. Finer points to talk about? Not really. Masteries don't matter much. Reservation efficiency, actually, I take that back. This one does matter. So this is the only place I could conceivably fit this in. And it's fine, because it still gives block chance, so it's still good. So this is worth it. Remember to take this. Fitting auras in is a bit of a pain in the ass, because I resorted to using two reservation efficiency jewels. Wait, discipline? Not even using discipline, anyway. Yeah, so it's probably a failed experiment. Oh, no, wait, I think I was trying to use Discipline instead of one of the Curses. Yeah, but I've decided the Curses are better. And the other one is Determination Efficiency, because I'm using Determination and Purity of Elements. Basically, all the auras I have, you can choose which ones to drop. You could put Malevolence in place of something, you could go less tanky. 
I like using Purity because you can get an Alls for it, which is one of the cheaper ones, and it solves like Freeze and Shock and Burn and all that. So, depends what you want to do. And Presence is still good. You gotta kind of come up with what you want to use as you're progressing through the build, unless you have a set goal for what to end up with. Because as my budget got better and better, I was able to fit more and more auras in over time, but that means having to shuffle them around every now and then, and try to fit what I can in. So I'm left with 69, nice, mana left after all that, which is just enough for Flesh Offering and Shield Charging. Flasks are pretty normal, I've got a couple of pretty nice ones. So gain charges when hit, use charges on full, great combo, especially on a Quartz Flask, if you don't have any other source of phasing. I've got the same thing on a Quicksilver, same thing on a Granite, and then Poison Immune on a Flask, and then the Writhing Jar. Good setup, I think. I'm not really paying attention to where I'm standing, I'm tanky enough to ignore positioning, which is actually what gets me killed because I can't ignore positioning forever, so eventually I'll just fall over due to not paying attention. But, it doesn't happen very often. It happens about as often as when I was playing Explosive Arrow Champion. That's how strong this feels. Good feeling.